Hello and welcome to another episode of the Stephen Dan Show. My name's Dan Holloway and this is my co-host Steve Herbert and uh, this week we are joined by Frank Sieben, uh, an SFM member who's going to share a lot of uh, stuff about his journey and his story. So for anyone watching this for the first time, my name's Dan, I come from a background in corporate software sales, basically working 70 hours per week, I was earning really good money but reached a point where I realised I was very unfulfilled and trading all that time for money for a boss wasn't bringing me you know, happiness and wasn't giving me the freedom that I wanted to do the things that I wanted to do in life. And the wake up moment that I had was realizing that any income guy in the past had never brought me fulfillment or happiness. So why did I think that an even higher income goal in the future was going to do that? And that was when I changed path, discovered SFM 10 months ago, met these guys plus a whole load more. Uh, Steve, would you like to give a bit of an intro about yourself for anyone watching for the first time, my friend? Sure thing, Dan. Thanks. Uh, Steve, husband, father, entrepreneur, started and grown several businesses over the years. And I, I really love that. I love the freedom. I love the challenge of building something like that and hopefully creating something valuable for people. But what I realized over time was that the freedom that I was searching for, part of my motivation for starting businesses and, and being an entrepreneur was to be able to spend more time with my family. And really my businesses owned me, my clients kind of ruled my schedule and it just, it just wasn't getting me where I wanted to go. So I went searching for something different. I knew that I had to get leverage somehow and came across the SFM, of course, leveraging technology and internet gives you the ultimate, ultimate leverage. So that's how I came here. So Frank, you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, maybe a little bit more detailed than Dan and I have, because we do this every week. Um, where you're from, maybe other careers that you've had and how you got to where you are today or where, how you got to the SFM. But yes. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me. I'm, I'm really grateful to be here with you guys. And it's a conversation among friends and family. So this is what I love here. Well, my name is Frank and I'm from Germany and I'm a music producer and I discovered the SFM in December 2015. And that was a time for me where I was in complete darkness. I had a toxic environment. I had a, a very uh, non-directive life. I, I, I wasn't living a purpose. I was just being in my studio 24 seven and working for other people's success without even getting mentioned because I, on top of that, I was a ghost producer all my life. And I realized that there must be something more to life because my body was telling me via uh, like a complete breakdown that I have to change something. And I lost my hearing on my left ear for about 80%. And with that came a tinnitus. And the tinnitus was always where, was always there where I want to go. So when I want to go to bed, tinnitus was with me. When I want to go in the studio, tinnitus was with me. And I went to five doctors in Hamburg and all of them told me Frank, you got to live with that. <laughs> and if you tell this a music producer, you got to live with a tinnitus and a hearing loss of 80%, I was ready to jump out of the window. And I nearly did. I got to be really transparent. I nearly did. Because I, I didn't see any, any way to live and any way to enjoy life anymore. But then I, I heard a voice and my intuition started talking to me. And there was this inner voice coming up telling me, okay, nobody is telling me how to live my life and nobody's giving me limitations ever. So that's when I started tapping into my intuition and really listening to what my body is telling me and also what my heart is telling me. And I started meditating and to make a long story short, now I'm sitting in front of you with my hearing healed, no more tinnitus, nothing. So I have my hearing back and I can even produce music in the studio again. So, and that's the time when I discovered the SFM. Yeah. 
Wow, mate, that's <laughs> what a story. I, I, I mean, where, where do we go from here? So I think from what you're saying there, that, that transition from coming from that place and then, I mean, I've met you in, in, in London and you as a person are just so full of life and, and so you know caring of other people as well. So when you were going through this, this phase, were there, were there any sort of specific things that you can attribute to pulling you out of that dark space? Any, any like, you know, days that you remember where you felt a shift to, you know, to bring you from there to there? Yeah, absolutely. The shift happened when I realized that I reached a point where I don't take it anymore. Mm. That's the point where you say, okay, this is enough. And I started meditating and through the meditation, I started healing myself. And it, it took a long time, but I never stopped believing that I can do it because I trusted my heart and I trusted my, my inner healing power. And everybody has that. Everybody can access this. And if I can do it, well, anybody can do it, right? This is, this is like my... my my giveaway here. So then I, I discovered the SFM in a, in a video. Stuart was paddling in front of the uh, <laughs> island of Mauritius. And immediately I, I had this, this bond of trust. I trusted him. I, I saw and I felt that this is a genuine message and he really cares. And this inspired me to take action and say, okay, I'm going to check this out. I'm going to try this for myself. I had no idea what was coming. <laughs> <laughs> no idea. And in the first, well, I, I got to say, due to the fact that I've been in my studio 24-7, I haven't been on socials. I haven't built any websites. Mm. I had no idea how to coach people. I had no idea how to even socialize with people. I was so afraid of getting in front of a camera even. Normally, if you would have asked me to join you guys, well, one and a half years ago, I would have not only screamed and left the room, I would have completely <laughs> left my country. That's how, how scared I've been, right? And then you realize that all these fears are just an illusion. Mm. And they hold you back from achieving your greatness they hold you back from really rising your your level and um helping others mm. because this is what it's ultimately about helping others and inspire others to take action and change their lives so the sfm was a place for me where i felt home like the moment i joined i felt that I can trust those people and you give this advance of trust to people when they come into your life the first. Yeah. And this, this has never been, this has just been growing from there. Like every day with all the love seeds planted, with all the care, with, with all the gratitude that was, was brought to the teaching and the communication, it was just amazing. And it helped me to discover my purpose of life, which I had no idea of. Because I, I, basically I limited myself to just the music. I thought I can spread the love. This is my motto normally, spread the love. I'm always about spread the love. Mm -hmm. And I thought I'm going to do this by putting out music that yeah, can, can touch people in their heart. But when I came into the SFM, I realized that there's so much more than just the music. I never saw myself having a message to others because I thought, okay, what do I have to say? Like nobody would listen to me. Nobody would even care what I have to share or what, what I love to share. And this, this transitioned my, my whole life. I realized that there are people that are supporting me and not holding me down anymore. And you want to be around those people, especially when you, when you really have goals that you want to take your life to the next level. It's, that's like a, a must. Definitely. 
definitely such such a great story um the you spoke earlier about belief and mm-hmm. at obviously at one point you had great belief in your ability as a music producer and you mm-hmm. can see that successfully but there were other parts of your life where you didn't have great positive belief in yourself mm-hmm. and I'm, I'm wondering what sort of advice you would give to people that find themselves in a similar situation how maybe how you transferred that that positive belief that you had in one area of life to another section of your life where you mm-hmm. really needed that um, mm-hmm. and it was you know literally causing you pain not having that belief um, mm-hmm. and yet you know you were able to get through it so, so some advice or how, how people how you did that how other people might be able to tr- do that for themselves yes. great question i appreciate that i would say one of the key principles that i started doing was looking at my past successes and looking where i have succeeded and where i feel confident and then I visualized these situations and then translated them into other areas of my life. And this helped me, first of all, to see that I can be successful in these areas as well, because only an illusion or something I'm worried about that is in the future is stopping me. That's, or something that is coming from the past that I had inherited from my parents, friends, that, that were in my past life that really gave me a pattern that I didn't feel that I'm worthy. I didn't feel I'm good enough. And I didn't feel I have anything to give, right? And then I transitioned in a way that I saw that this is not about me. And I put myself out of the equation and I said, Frank, you've got to put yourself out there because there are people who need your help because you're the only person that can communicate to those people in a way that it touches their heart and it inspires them to take action. And this was my season of discovery for myself to really find out who I am, that I can have the confidence and, and also that it is so needed that I do step up in this world because if I want to spread the love, I have no other choice. Mm. So I took myself out of the equation and I also started seeing things that were holding me back, like fear, for example, you always project something in the future or it's coming from the past when you fear something. But if you find out that this fear is an illusion, then you can disqualify that. And you can do this by just detaching yourself from that fear. And I've done this by simply saying to myself, and it's really profound, it blew me away when I found this out. You say, I, I want to achieve this higher level, or I, w- I want to achieve whatever you put there in your life, my healing, but I scare myself of getting re- by imagining of getting rejected, of uh, failing, of whatever you put there, right? So if you do it this way, you completely detach yourself from that fear because you no longer say, I'm scared. You say, I scare myself by imagining. It's powerful. Mm. It's distance to the fear and it empowers you to choose and change. Amazing. That is such a powerful message yeah. and you're spot on as well because I mean, if, if you can, like you say, detach from the fear, not make it about you. And if you can make your, your mission and the reason that you're doing what you're doing bigger than yourself, because people rely on you, then it, it just, it almost turns you into like a, just a vehicle, doesn't it? To, to just achieve the result that you need to achieve because everybody else needs you to achieve it. And that yeah. makes it, you know, it, it makes us able to do things that are so much bigger than just ourselves. So, so yeah. Yeah. And on top of that, my, my purpose in life is to be an unconditional stand for others so that their heart is awakened to the impact and love they bring into this world. So if I want to be in alignment with my purpose, there's no other way. Yeah. 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 I agree. And then I also realized that fear is the same, 
everything is the same in your body as with excitement. So I started telling my mind that, no, 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 you get this wrong. I'm not feared. I'm, mm. I'm not scared here. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. And that's how you can turn things around really quickly when you realize that you can make a choice that changes your behavior, changes your thinking, and ultimately changes your life. So with that in mind, Frank, how do you see the, the next 12 to 24 months panning out you know, now, that, now that you have that ability and that power? Oh, that's a great question. I love that. Well, I, as you probably know, I, I amalgamated my business to, together with uh, Jill Humphrey, my co-creator. And we want to empower other people to step out of their limiting beliefs and step out of their, their fear and help them have that breakthrough and being that unconditional stand for those people. Because we know, first of all, it is necessary because we see what's coming from the digital economy and, and yeah. from the disruption that is happening in the whole world. Second of all, we see that so many people are stuck in a place where they, for example, hate their job. Mm. They hate their relationships and they don't understand or they, they have not been introduced or waken up, been woken up to the concept that you can actually have a life. <laughs> you can actually have the life that you want to create. And so many people are stuck in this rut to say so. Yeah. That we need to wake those people up. Definitely. Definitely. And I, I just want to let you know that the, the phrase that you said earlier, the I scare myself by, I'm totally using that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think that's great. I'm stealing yeah. that one. <laughs> yes. Um, Awful. So you, you've been with the, with, uh, the community SFM for, you said a year and a half now? Yeah. About? Okay. About. So, if you think of if you think of Frank two years ago, <laughs> the Frank of two years ago. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. <laughs> don't, don't make me go there. No, I, I get it. Yeah. So think of him. There are untold number of people still in that place, mm -hmm. still having those feelings, those fears, whatever it was, you know, when you were there. Yes what sort of advice would you give people who are, who are in that mindset? Um, knowing that, you know, a lot of the stuff that we talk about, uh, what, what the three of us might consider a normal conversation, mm. it took all of us a little while to get to that point where we could actually even have that conversation. Mm. So, yes. you know, kind of gearing it back, what, what, what would you use to wake up Frank two years ago? Ooh, that's a great question. I would probably start by saying that you got to take a look at your, your people who are surrounding you. And if those people are empowering you and are helping you to achieve what you want to achieve, instead of always being the naysayer or holding you back, whatever their agenda is, like their, their agenda can be many different things. Like it, it could be fear that they lose connection to you. It could be even envy that they don't want to um, see you empowered because then you're going to be on top of them. And there is this hierarchy thinking, I would say, that that was going on in, in the music business where I have been completely, I, I've been put down so many times and told off um, not to step out that I thought this, this is my, this, I, I even thought this is my identity. So I would probably start by saying, take a look at your, your surroundings. Who's really treating you the way that you want to be treated and who's empowering you? That's the first step. The second step is you, you simply need to connect with a community that is empowering anyway because 
if you share your ideas or if you start talking about where you want to go or your, uh, your, your purpose in life, then you're going to have that conversation where people call you out on your bullshit. There's no way this is not going to happen if you are surrounded by the right people. And it's probably time to find out if you might get a mentor who can help you do this because you cannot do this on your own, I would say. You need someone to really help you get this, inspi get, get this inspiration. And sometimes it's this, this flame is burning inside of you, right? But it's burned down very, very low. And sometimes it just needs a little kind of this movement. And then it starts lighting up again. A little fresh air. A little fresh air. This is what it's needed. Just a little breathe of fresh air or a little love or maybe somebody even listening to you and not only listening and say, yeah, 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 I get it, I get it. No, listen and understand why the words are spoken. Because this is so powerful, right? There's always a message behind the message. And if I would have listened to myself like two years ago, and I would have been in a community that is empowering, like, like our loving family here, everybody would have called me out on my bullshit. Everybody. I it's think... so planned to see. If I would see my, my younger self, on the street now, I wouldn't even recognize myself. I would stay away from that energy. But I would try and help. Not, no, I'm not, I'm not trying. So let me correct this. <laughs> I, would, I would reach out to that person and wake this person up by saying, um, listen, you've got you to gotta find a way, no matter what it takes, to really step into a life that you so want to live. Because everybody has that dream. When we ask people to, to write their ideal day here, everybody writes that out. And it's in most cases, it's an ideal day where when you listen to it or when you, when you see it, somebody sends it to you, you just start crying. It's so emotional. Everybody has that. And everybody has that story to share that is like waiting to get awakened inside of them. Absolutely. And the, the thing that I most resonated with there, Frank, you know, in everything that you just shared was the, the community and the mentors of surrounding yourself with, with people who are going to help you get to where you want to get to. It's like Jim Rohn says, you know, we, we become the average of the five people we surround ourselves with. And if, if we've got nobody that is, you know, helping us, get to that space where we want to, you know, that we want to reach is going to be extremely difficult, if not impossible mm -hmm. to actually do that for ourselves as well. So it's such a powerful share there. Mm -hmm. Now, I think um, it's pretty clear that meditation and the SFM community has been a huge, huge, huge part of your transformation over the last 18 months or so. Can you share, um, can you think of any other major breakthrough that you've had uh, in the last 18 months with, uh, with SFM? Oh yeah, I'd love to share some, um, the, the, like the, the first three months of my journey here because that was very, very powerful. So you probably heard about this term, the five things leaders do. This is like, mm -hmm. uh, it gives you a roadmap, what to do every day. And I had no idea what that was when I heard it the first time, but after returning from Momentum Day in January 2016, where I also met Jill, I started masterminding with people and I started implementing this weird thing called five things leaders do. And I thought, okay, well, yeah, I try. That's when I said, really, I try. Because I had no idea where it takes me, right? And then I started working on these five things leaders do. And what happened was, really crazy after a month and I had no idea what was coming after a month I was writing I remember this like it was yesterday I was writing a blog post in Hamburg still in, in my 10 square meters in Hamburg 
And one of my masterminding colleagues, Cynthia, she called me on my phone and she said, Frank, Frank, have you seen it? And I was like, seen what? <laughs> I was completely surprised. And then I thought something has happened because she sounded like something has happened. And then she said, have you seen the leaderboards? And I said, no, I haven't. And I don't even know where they are. And I thought somebody of our masterminding group made it to the leaderboards. And she started laughing so hard that I was like, what's going on here? <laughs> and then she said, okay, Frank, you got to log in into your dashboard and scroll down. Okay. I said, I'm logged into my dashboard. I scrolled down and then it hit me. I made it onto the leaderboards, the second, the, the second position. And I was like, oh my God, how did that happen? I had no idea how this was possible. And the next day I was even on the number one spot. And I mean, if I can do this by following the five things leaders do, everybody can do this. I just did that. If there is a secret, it's this one. That's great. That's great. Um, early, earlier, um, you had talked about how you spent all your time in the studio. You didn't know what social media was. You weren't aware of the other opportunities that were out there. So yeah. it, it, in that context, were you afraid of stepping out and, and you know, creating a website, creating a blog, going into mm -hmm. social media, all of these things? Did, did you find it easy? Were there some things that, that you thought were going to be easy and they wound up being hard or vice versa? Was, it, was there something that was, that was really difficult for you? Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, kind of give people who are much earlier in their journey than you are a, yeah. an idea of, of how you got through those sorts of things, how, your perception versus what really happened. Yeah, great question. I, I totally was afraid. Absolutely. If, if I was told that I have to be outside and, and like create a Facebook account, create an Instagram account and be on social media showing up, I was like, I'm out of here. Gosh, I cannot do this. This is, this is asking too much. I've never done this. And this is the thing. It took me out of my comfort zone, but not only out of my comfort zone, but way out of my comfort zone. Because I've never done this before. I, talk, like, I was working with my artists who were on social media and I was looking at what they were doing and I was like applauding them for when they post something that got a significant amount of likes. I've never done that myself. So this was totally scary. On the other hand, again, I knew if I want to be that stand for other people and if I want to get myself out of the equation, this is what I need to do. And I said, okay, whatever it takes, to be that unconditional stand for others, I'm going to do it. And I commit to do it every day. And I created a Facebook account, Instagram account. I've, I've built like several websites now. I had no idea of WordPress. I didn't even know what that was when I heard WordPress. I didn't even know how to spell it. <laughs> and it's, um, I don't know how you want to call it, but thanks to all the education that we have available to us, like on our dashboard and even on the internet, like there's so much information out there. It's, it's easy to acquire a skill, right? The information is out there, but the fact that what we have here is implementing the right system to it and gives you the right steps because you can get lost in this information, right? I went online on YouTube. I remember that and I was searching videos, how to do something on WordPress. And I just got overwhelmed by the millions of videos that are out there. And then I reached out to the community and got help. And this is also the system that is in place here for everybody. Stuart always says, people fail, systems don't. And I realized that in a very early stage, I would say, and I trusted the system and I knew I just have to make this work for me in a way that I can make this a reality for, for, for me. Yeah. And this is what I've, what I've done so far. 
Awesome. And, and I think as well, you've hit on a really important point there, Frank, which is that a lot of people come into this and like you say, the reason they fail is not because of the system is because normally if something that's happening up there, like they don't believe they can do it. They can't overcome the overwhelm. They, you know, people yeah. ultimately give up and that's why, you know, 95% of people in business do stop and not make it. And there's, um, you know, a stat that I always, always find so interesting whenever someone quotes it at me, when they say, oh, you know, 95% of entrepreneurs fail within the first five years, so the chances of success is only one in 20. So no, no, no. The chance of success, if you decide, is 100%. If you will quit at nothing and you will just keep going until you make it, you will succeed 100% of the time. It's just that 19 out of 20 people will not do that, hence why they fail. So, yes. you know, such a powerful point. Um, so Frank, I mean, you've obviously talked about a, a, a whole load of things that, that I think can really help people in these, these early stages, especially if they're, you know, either thinking of getting started in an online business and, um, you know, or even outside of SFM. So what would be, um, a point that you might share with someone who's in that space? Maybe they, they don't, they're not quite sure whether they can do it. It's too overwhelming. It's, you know, outside of their comfort zone, what one little piece of advice can you think of that might inspire somebody to go, you know what, I believe in myself, I'm going to try it, I'm going to do it. So not try, I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no trying. Yeah, only do. <laughs> only do, yeah. <sighs> one piece of advice. I would say if you start seeing if you start, first of all, you start embracing failure because this is yeah. the, the first step. You embrace failure and you say, okay, I'm going to commit to this no matter what and I make this work. I go right, left, up, down, through, beyond everything, right? I make it work, whatever it takes. The next thing is you see if you fail or if you get rejection, this is a form of feedback from the universe. And there's only two types of feedback. There's the type of feedback that says yes or no, right? And both are of, of this feedback, both of them are valuable. Yes empowers you and can, can make you grow your confidence in, for most people. But when they get a no, it's sometimes that they feel they are rejected or they feel that they are disempowered. But if you start seeing this in a way that this is only a feedback mm. to help you improve, because the universe is just telling you, well, Frank, this is not working this way, so try another way. So if you take another approach, you will get a different result. And there are so many people that have done the same thing again and again and again, and they expect different results, and this is just not going to happen. So if you change this and do something different in your business, relationship, it goes into all areas of your life, actually. You can make it work if you're willing to put in the effort and if you're willing to accept that life will give you only these two kinds of feedback. This is, and, and both are valuable to you. Yeah. So if I can boil that down be willing to do the work and be flexible. Yeah. And take full responsibility for your life. This is also something I want to stress actually very much. So because if you take full responsibility for your life, you take the power back. You say, okay, I'm in charge now. It's not somebody outside yourself. Who's kind of controlling you like a marionette, right? With mm -hmm. <laughs> And if you're in charge, you can make, you can create change yourself and you're empowered immediately. Yeah. I realized that. Definitely. Definitely. Responsibility is key. And I, I would actually personally, I would also add community. You've talked about it a lot, but yes. being involved in, in, in a community that's going to support you. That's sort, that's sort of where you started out in mm -hmm. this conversation today is the difference between a community that was tearing you down and a community that's building you up. I think that's a major, major part of anybody's success. We, we talk about it being a, a team sport, really. Mm. And uh, so make sure you put yourself in the right place. So future, 
what does your future look like, Frank? I can tell by the smile on your face that it's, <laughs> it's a bright, happy future. Oh, yes. um, but uh, a little compare and contrast to perhaps the Frank of two years ago, uh, his future versus today's Frank and, and, and his future. Yes, well, it, there's several aspects to this because if I compare myself sitting in the studio two years ago, I was desperate and just looking at the screen and maybe not even come up with ideas what to produce and what to play for, for weeks, even months. So I was just staring at the screen, having that fear that how do I pay my rent? How do I pay my studio rent? Like all these fears are coming up. So now I sit in the studio and I can create. <laughs> and I can create whatever I want. And I don't have to call after record companies who don't even pay me because I had companies where, where I designed a remix, I created a remix and I called them and I was like, how do we go with the payment? And they said, okay, we're not paying you, sue us. I was like, okay, that's nice, really. <laughs> well, yeah, this is what I got. So from now on, this will not affect me anymore and I'm not attracting this into my life. So I have uh, a whole new universe of inspiration in front of me now in, in the music. For the business, whew, that goes even way beyond that because together, Jill and I, of course, we, we want to also grow our, our business to a place where we can empower as many people as possible. We, we have a goal set out, but when we write something, we... we we, we cannot share it because it's, it's just very special to us. But there are a lot of goals where we want to empower other people. We also, um, our, our biggest goal is like to create a festival where, where people come together and celebrate themselves, can be their true selves and have a ton of DJs there um, celebrating with us. Uh, this is certainly one of our goals. I, I can definitely share that because this is a, just a big vision. And we're creating this by visualizing everything like in very, very much detail. And we go into the emotion. How, how does it feel when we have that space? I'm also, I, I can also see and feel myself. I, I know how it feels already. When I start traveling, I want to travel the world because I want to find out where I want to settle when I settle, right? Yeah. I, I know for sure that I'm not made to stay in Germany. The weather, I can't take it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not putting up with that. So, yeah. You should go to England with that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you love the weather there. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not there at the moment, it's fine. Well, it's, yeah. it's definitely better where I am now than in Hamburg because Hamburg is just smog every day. You, you wake up, it's gray. And you, you can't even tell if it's winter, summer, autumn, spring. It's all the same. There's one season. That's smog. <laughs> <laughs> so I suppose that's a, that's, a, that's, a, that's a good message to finish on. Get out of Hamburg because it's smog everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of Hamburg first step. <laughs> <laughs> Love it, Frank. No, th thank you so much for, um, for sharing everything that you shared. I think there's, a, there's some absolute gems there that can help a, a lot of people you know, who are maybe coming from a, a similar position as yourself or a different position, but ultimately have that desire to create something new for themselves. So just want to thank you for, on behalf of me and Steve um, for, for joining the show. It's been really, really good to have you here. Um, so yeah, you know, thank you so much. Everybody watching, have an awesome rest of your day, wherever you are in the world. Uh, myself and Steve will see you again next week for the next episode of The Stephen Dan Show. Thank you very much, guys. We'll speak Thanks to you everybody. Soon. Thank you, Frank. You guys have a great day. Love the love, guys. <laughs>